Today, I'm going to be going over everything you need to know if you're a brand new player to Rise of Kingdoms or if you're a returning player who hasn't played in a really long time. It is summer of 2024 and Rise of Kingdoms just got a massive graphical overhaul. So a lot of new players are starting the game right now, and this is probably the best time to start Rise of Kingdoms in the last two or three years. This is the first video of mine that you've ever seen. I've been playing Rise of Kingdoms since October of 2018. I have 2,058 consecutive login days, so I'm going to take over five years of rise of kingdoms experience and put it in this one video there's going to be chapters down below so make sure you jump to the part of the video that you care the most about and consider dropping a thumbs up on the video while you're down there now the first thing i want to start with is what should your primary goals be in rise of kingdoms what do you actually do in this game if you're a brand new player your primary goal should be to get your city hall to level 25 as fast as possible along the way you're going to be building a massive army of infantry cavalry and archer units and you're going to collect power powerful commanders to lead those troops into battle against real players in other servers around the world. And these open field wars are absolutely massive. And they happen in a specific event that comes around called KVK or kingdom versus kingdom. I'm currently playing in a KVK event right now. And as you can see, it takes 46 more days for this event to finish. So I really mean it when I say that these are massive open field battles that take place over the course of literally weeks. And it is literally the most fun that I've ever had in a mobile game which is why rise of kingdoms has been so popular for so long now your success in these massive kingdom versus kingdom game modes really comes down to being a part of a good kingdom so when you first start the game you want to make sure that you are playing in the best possible kingdom to start in and the best kingdom or server that you should be starting in is the newest possible server or kingdom that is available when you first start playing the game the good news is that unless you go in and change this manually the game will most likely automatically put you in the newest possible server at the time of recording this the newest server right now is kingdom 3559 which has only been open for five and a half hours now there's a few reasons why the newest servers are the best ones for brand new players the first of which is because if you joined an older server like the one that I'm in most of the players in my server have three four five years of experience on their account which means the PvP matchmaking for our server is going to put us up against other players who've been playing the game for three four five years and they have five years worth of progress on you that would not be a fair matchup and so you want to be in a server where the matchmaking is going to put you up against other players of your level at least for your first few pvp events later down the line you can always migrate to another server the second reason you want to start in a brand new server is because of the rise of kingdoms event this event only ever comes around one time at the start of a brand new server and as you can see you can get a ton of really great rewards absolutely for free these items include resources for progressing your account Account, keys for getting your hands on rare commanders and a bunch of other things that you're going to need to progress your account on top of that you'll have a chance to get your hands on the legendary commander Cleopatra which is great for gathering we'll talk about that later and you can even participate in the glory of battle events the hidden Lotus city skin that you get from this isn't really that good so don't worry too much if you don't get your hands on it in the end game you'll probably never use this anyway now a few days after the rise of kingdoms event is another event called low harsh trial this event is a recurring event so it will come around again but this is how you're going to get your hands on the epic commander lohar now the lohar's trial event is the only way to unlock this commander in the game and it's important to get your hands on him as early as possible because lohar is what's known as a peacekeeping commander which means he's absolutely garbage for pvp but he's one of the best commanders in the game for defeating pve content which is player versus environment which includes mainly barbarians out in the world and barbarian forts that you're going to find around the map the best part about lohar is his third skill this gives you 70% more experience from defeating those barbarians out in the world. And it specifically states that this is for both the primary and secondary commander in your army. So Lohar is actually going to help you level up all the other commanders that you get throughout the game much, much faster by grinding those barbarians. Next, let's talk about the best civilization that you should pick as a brand new player in Rise of Kingdoms. This is the very first choice that you're going to make when you download the game on day one. And this is kind Kind of like the Squirtle, Bulbasaur, or Charmander moment if you're familiar with Pokemon. But as a brand new player, there's really only two or three civilizations that I would recommend as being the very best to start with. And those three civilizations are France, China, or Britain. I like all three of these picks for different reasons. And if you didn't pick one of these civilizations, don't worry, you can change for free. I'll explain that in just a second. But first, let's talk about France. Why do I like France so much for brand new players? Well, as you probably already know, the civilization that you pick 
comes with an epic commander that you're going to be getting over time for completing the main quests in the tutorial and Joan of Arc is easily one of the best epic commanders in the entire game because she is what's known as a gathering commander and gathering commanders as the name implies are responsible for gathering resources out in the world if I come outside my city I can find resources on the map like this level six cropland and I can send Joan of Arc or any commander really to this cropland to gather 1.2 million resources and bring them back to my city so I can use that to upgrade my buildings or to train troops or to research technology but if you look at Joan of Arc's second skill it says she gets a 25 percent gathering speed bonus and a 25% load bonus, which means she's going to gather those resources faster. And this gathering speed bonus is universal. So this works, whether you're gathering food, wood, stone, gold, or gems, which is extremely unique. Most of the gathering commanders in the game specify a gathering speed for each of the different resources. So for example, Constance is faster at gathering wood than she is for food and stone. And she actually does not get any bonus for gathering gold or gems. And you're you're going to be gathering resources through the entire duration of your rise of kingdoms career not only that but she also has one of the best buffs in the entire game so you can actually use her in other game modes as well she's not just good for gathering alone but besides Joan of Arc she also gives you a universal troop health bonus which is good for all troop types cavalry infantry and archers which is not the same for other civilizations for example Britain gives you just archer attack Vikings give you just infantry attack and you get a faster wood gathering speed now if we take a look at Britain the starting epic command here is Boudicca. Remember how I said Lohar is great for the early game because he helps you level up your other commanders? Well, Boudicca operates in a very similar way. You can see she gets 25% more damage to those barbarians and she gets 20% bonus experience. So she's not quite as good as Lohar, but you can literally just start the game with her. You don't have to wait for an event to come around. And also the rest of her skills are much better than Lohar's. And the third civilization that I mentioned is China. And China is a very good civilization to start with for multiple reasons first of all China gives you a five percent building speed which does help you upgrade all of your buildings much faster and five percent doesn't sound like a lot but later down the line you're gonna have buildings that upgrade over like 50 days or more so speeding that up by five percent is actually gonna save like literally days off of your time which is really nice also action point recovery is very good here this is gonna help you actually defeat more barbarians out in the world for free and defeating those barbarians gets you experience it gets you resources you're going to want to do that but but finally, Sun Tzu is probably the most powerful epic commander in the game, especially from a PvP perspective. And even from a PvE scenario, defeating those barbarians, he's going to be very good there as well. We'll talk more about Sun Tzu later, but just know that pretty much everyone agrees that Sun Tzu from a PvP perspective is the most powerful epic commander in the game. For those reasons, I would say that either China or France are the two best options for you, with Britain coming in at a close third. Now, as you play the game, you're actually going to get a free civilization change item I think it's around at level City Hall 10 or 12 somewhere in there and this is a very valuable item and you should probably save this until later in the game when you really understand the game a bit better because you don't really want to waste this now you can get more of these items for free through your Alliance we'll talk about alliances later in the video but just know that if you change your civilization you will not change the commander that you get from your main quest it's literally says it right here but honestly don't worry too much about which civilization you picked because in the grand scheme of things this really is a micro optimization so if you picked a civilization because you like their history or their commander or their aesthetic that's completely fine especially if that's going to help you enjoy the game more because after all this is a video game the most important part is actually enjoying it now the last thing I want to say about civilizations is that this part of the video the civilization part is the only part that might actually age kind of poorly over the next six to twelve months because typically every year we get a brand new civilization in the game and they've already kind of sneak peeked at what the next one might be but we don't know what the buffs or commander are going to be and so if the next civilization is the best one for new players I will put it in the pinned comment down below so if you're watching this video 6 12 24 months after it's uploaded double check the pinned comment to see if this part of the video has changed at all this is also a good time to remind you guys that I have literally hundreds of guide videos for rise of kingdoms and I release multiple rise of kingdoms videos every single week so if you don't want to miss out on breaking news or up-to-date information consider subscribing to the channel down below and click the bell 
if you don't want to miss a new video okay now that you've picked your civilization you're in a brand new server the number one thing that you want to do is find your way into the strongest possible alliance that you can alliances are the backbone of the community here in rise of kingdoms and the community of this game is like the number one reason that people continue to play it for literally years but besides that being in an active and strong alliance is literally going to help you progress your account faster because of the alliance help system so as you can see here there are multiple players that are asking for help from my alliance I can click this button and I can help all of them with whatever task they're actually going to be doing and helping other players in your alliance actually reduces the time it takes for them to upgrade a building or to research a new technology or to heal their troops in the hospital plus alliances have a lot of different technology here that's going to help you get more resources and upgrade your buildings faster just in general and so you are literally going to progress your account much faster if you're in an alliance and especially one that is active with players online all the time so they can click that help button at maximum level you can get 30 helps for each upgrade which in the long run will actually save you weeks worth of progress so please join an alliance if not just for this but also your alliance's territory will produce resources over time and you can claim these whenever you log in so you actually just get free resources over time also being in an alliance is the only way that you can take down barbarian forts this is pve content that gives you really good rewards including gems which are premium currency gold keys which can get you legendary commanders in the tavern speed ups experience resources and items called book of covenant which you're going to need if you ever want to reach end game here and unlock the highest possible tier of units so keep that in mind but alliances also have a gift feature and as you can see here as other players are taking down barbarians out in the world I am getting resources for it I'm getting gold I'm getting stone I'm getting wood just because other players are online and active even if I log off and on top of that if other players in my alliances make purchases in the game I will then get an item as well and so here you can see I got free speed ups free gems free books of the covenant free VIP just because other people that I'm playing with are spending money so there's at least half a dozen reasons why being in an alliance will give you a tremendous amount of benefits and will help you progress your account much faster but while we're talking about VIP points let's talk about the second thing that you should be doing when you first start playing the game the second is get your VIP level to VIP 6. why is this well as you can see here VIP 6 helps you unlock a second building queue what that means is you can upgrade two buildings at a time so that effectively doubles your building speed forever having VIP six is one of the best ways to level up as fast as possible because upgrading buildings is a massive bottleneck in the early game there's a lot of ways to get VIP points for free for example you can get it from your Alliance shop you can also get it as I showed before randomly from Alliance members making purchases in the game you also get a small amount of VIP points every day just by logging in and you can also convert your gems into VIP points which is especially useful if you're really close to that next VIP level and you want those extra bonuses okay now that we've talked about a couple of different ways to level up faster in rise of kingdoms let's go back to the original goal that I mentioned at the beginning of the video and that is to get your city hall to level 25. you want to rush getting this building to 25 as fast as possible why is that well that's because the level of your city hall is the cap for the level of all the other buildings in your city and so if my city hall is only level 20 then all the other buildings in my city can be a maximum level of 20 and so because this is the bottleneck to unlocking the rest of the features and the maximal possible efficiency of your account this has to be the first thing that you get to level 25 and this building does have a few prerequisites for example in order to level up your city hall you have to bring your wall to its highest level possible and in order to do that you have to bring your tavern to its highest level possible and in order to do that you have to bring a quarry to its highest level possible so there are some prerequisites for your city hall but besides that this should be your number one priority now there's going to be two bottlenecks that you reach when you're trying to do this especially for free to play players the first is going to be resources okay primarily stone and the second thing is going to be speed ups right it's going to take a lot of time in order to do some of the later stage upgrades now there's two ways to solve the resource problem the first way is through gathering resources out in the world and we already talked about how important this is when we discussed Joan of Arc earlier in the video and it's for this reason that the gathering commanders in the game should be your number one 
one priority at the beginning of the game specifically Matilda of Flanders and Constance now we'll talk a little bit about Constance later but the reason both of these commanders are so good at gathering is because of their last skill Matilda says she gets a bonus 10 percent of resources when she completes gathering from a resource point that 10 percent adds up over time and it is actually insane you will get literally millions of extra resources from this skill alone and Constance is a blue commander who also has that on her fourth skill which is it makes her the best blue commander in the game no question so at the very beginning of the game if you're wondering what commanders to focus on the gatherers no question go for the gatherers not only are their skills going to help you get more resources but their talents will as well if we come into the talent tree here you're going to see multiple talents here give you massive amounts of gathering speed you're also going to get another six percent bonus resources from the more the better and superior tools is basically like Joan of Arc's second skill but in talent form so you want to get your gatherers to at least level 37 in order to get the most benefit out of these commanders as you can see most of my gatherers are at least level 40. I've taken some of them farther but you really don't have to but doing this early is going to help you with resources throughout the rest of the game now the second way that you can sort of solve the resource problem is through what's called farm accounts if you tap on your player icon on the top left corner and you come down to your settings you can actually click on accounts and characters and you can see that you can actually have multiple characters I have multiple accounts in multiple kingdoms but really I only play on my main account and sometimes I'll play on my farm account and what is a farm account a farm account is essentially an account that you make in the server that you're in and the only goal of that account is to get it to a high enough level to where it can efficiently gather resources out in the world and then it can take those resources and send them over to your main account so as you can see here I have a level 23 farm account I have 100 million gold here on the account and I can send this gold over to my main account and this is a great way to level up your main account a lot faster which is why many players have at least one farm account in the server that they're in now that we've talked about ways to get a bunch of resources on your account let's shift gears and talk a little bit about pve content which is player versus environment and in particular we're going to be talking about barbarians barbarians are not only a great way to get more resources for your account but you can also get some premium currency some free gems from doing this and you're going to get speed ups and experience tombs that you can use for other commanders later down the line but they will also drop an item known as the arrow of resistance you're going to need arrows of resistance to max out your watchtower building which you're going to need to do if you ever want to unlock the highest tier of units now, I've mentioned this multiple times with the video tiers of units as you can see here in my trading buildings you start with tier one units later on the line you can unlock tier two three four and five and you unlock those through research at your academy okay we're going to talk more about the academy and research later down the line but just know that you can't complete your technology without maxing out your watchtower and your castle and so you will need to defeat barbarians out in the world in order to do so now as i mentioned earlier with lohar and with Boudica, those were the epic commanders that we talked about earlier in the video there are some commanders with the peacekeeping talent tree that are better for defeating barbarians than others and the reason for this is for well first of all they have a lot of talents that just deal more damage to and take less damage from barbarians but also you can see here that we're going to get even more experience trophy hunter is going to give you even more resources when you defeat these barbarians which is very very useful and will add up to the literally tens if not hundreds of millions of resources over the course of your rise of kingdoms career but also they have a talent that reduces the amount of action points it costs to attack barbarians and yes there is a limit with how many barbarians you can kill throughout a day and if you see on the top left corner my icon here has a green bar underneath it and if you tap on that you'll see that right now I have a full action point bar which is not good you should always be spending these down and why is that well if I come over here and I start attacking this barbarian you'll see that it actually spent some of my action points and if you tap this button right here you'll see that your action points recover over time and it will tell you how long until your action points are fully recovered and so what you want to do is spend down all of your action points every day that way when you log off for the day you go to work you go to school you go to sleep then you're going to be recovering those action points as you're sleeping and then you come back to the game and you can kill a bunch of barbarians as well now as you can see I just defeated that barbarian here and what did I get well I got some free training speed ups I also got experience these are tombs of knowledge and I got a bunch of resources as well now my commanders are already maximum level so they didn't gain any experience for themselves but if you're a brand new player you're going to be leveling up those commanders as well now if you don't see any barbarian 
Sumerians near your city you can always search for them you'll see a little magnifying glass icon on the screen you can literally search for whatever barbarian level you want right now I'm experiencing an elevated level of barbarian because I'm in that kvk game mode but for you the levels are going to start from level one and they're going to go all the way up to level 25. of course the higher the level of the barbarian the better the rewards that you're going to get so you pick the level that you want you tap search and the game will automatically find the nearest barbarian to you of that particular level just be careful in the early game you might not be able to defeat some of the barbarians they might be too high of a level and you'll actually lose but since the higher level barbarians give better rewards you want to be grinding the highest level of barbarian that you can actually defeat the number of armies that you can have out in the world will depend on the level of your city hall which is another reason why it's so important to level that building up so as you can see here I have five out of five armies here one of my armies is actually over here gathering gold but the other four armies I can use to attack the same barbarian and get four times the rewards for killing that barbarian also that barbarian is going to die a lot faster because I have four armies killing it but once I use all my action points I can use those four armies to then gather resources out in the world you always want to be using the maximum number of your dispatches available so if you have five available you should always either be using all five to kill barbarians or killing barbarian forts or gathering resources you don't ever want to have empty army slots here because then you're just missing value like it takes time to gather resources out in the world and so you don't want to waste any time by having your army slots be empty right so I'm gonna find the nearest gold nodes that I can and I'm gonna send my armies out there so that way they can gather okay so far we've talked about leveling up and we've talked about which buildings to focus on now let's talk about which technology to focus on here and we have as you can see two branches of technology there's economic and there is military and this is a war strategy game so you might be thinking that military is the way to go but the correct answer is actually economic technology you want to start the game and you want to focus mainly on economic technology and there's a few different goals that you have here that you can get in the early game first of all masonry should be your first primary goal 15 percent building speed the faster you get this the sooner you can get faster building speed for the rest of the time that you play the game in the same vein as that we have a technology called writing and this gives you 10 percent research speed so the sooner you get this the faster the rest of your research is going to be for the rest of the time you play your game and so if you do writing first then all of your military tech is going to upgrade 10 percent faster and later down the line you're going to get engineering and mathematics which gives you even more building and research speed and that's not to mention that a bunch of these other economic technologies give you faster gathering speed they give you faster production of resources in your city and like I said before that's going to be one of the massive bottlenecks to progressing your account to the end game it doesn't matter if you have a lot of tier two units because in the end game those are going to be fodder they're going to be useless to you anyway right now of course military technology is important eventually and some of the milestones here are the unlocking of higher tier units because higher tier units are going to make a big difference when it comes to defeating PVE content defeating other players in PvP in the late game but really economic technology comes first once you've reached some of the bottlenecks of your economic technology that's when you can come back and catch up your military technology now there are a couple of buildings that are actually going to help you with your technology as well those two buildings are going to be your Alliance Center and the Academy itself if you look at your Academy you'll see that there's actually a research speed bonus depending on the level of your Academy itself and so as soon as you get your next City Hall level you also want to come in and get your Academy to the highest level possible so that way all of the research that you do at that level is going to go faster than it normally would and also the Alliance Center is one of the most important in the entire game and that's because the level of your Alliance Center determines how many times you can be helped and we talked about this earlier in the video but the more times players help you the faster you're actually going to upgrade any buildings or research technology or heal your units at the hospital and so both of these buildings should be sort of your number two priority after your city hall first is city hall then it's going to be your alliance center and your academy next let's talk about the campaign here in rise of kingdoms and it's kind of funny that we've gotten this far into the video and we're just now talking about the campaign but the single player campaign in rise of kingdoms is called expedition it's off on the left here 
and the expedition consists at the time of recording this 80 different levels of pve combat that you can go through and every time you defeat these you get a star rating either one two or three stars and as you go through and defeat these levels you're going to get what's known as medal of the conqueror you can see i have 270,000 up in the top here and progressing through expedition as early as possible and getting as far as you possibly can at your current power level is going to be crucial for the progression of your account because coming into the expedition metal store you're going to see ways that you can get some commander sculptures primarily it's going to be epic commanders but you can also get your hands on ethel fled which is a legendary commander and this is the only way that you can get your hands on ethel fled she is literally the only 100 free to play legendary in the entire game now you'll also notice every five levels is a purple banner and these are sort of like boss levels and these are going to give you legendary commander sculptures the first time that you defeat them and legendary commander sculptures are extremely valuable so you definitely want to get these as soon as possible now the primary thing that you should be spending your medals on in the metal store at the beginning of the game is actually constants okay and this might be an unpopular opinion but getting as many resources as possible at the beginning of the game is so 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 important so you should just get constants out of the way as soon as possible and then focus on ethel fled now you can only get three ethel fled sculptures per day and you need 690 of them to max her out and that goes for any legendary commander in rise of kingdoms so that is definitely a number worth knowing but the reason that you want to start with constance is what i mentioned before with her and that is her fourth skill her fourth skill gives you 10 percent bonus resources and honestly getting all four of her skills to max level is really not going to take that many sculptures she's only a blue commander in fact if you want you can screenshot this for your reference but this is how many commander sculptures it takes to max out a commander of a given rarity so the green commanders only take 240 the blue commanders like constants only take 340 and then the purples are 440 that's the epic commanders and legendary are 690 which is the most expensive and the best commanders in the game okay so far in the video we've talked about progressing your account in many different ways but one thing we haven't really touched too much on is commanders we've talked about leveling them up we haven't talked anything about what the best commanders are we haven't talked about what commanders even do how do they function what's their purpose what's their role so let's explain commanders really really quick okay when you first summon a commander they're only going to have one skill unlocked that's going to be their active skill and this is for every commander in the game their most important skill the only exception to that is the gathering commanders but for everybody else in the entire game their active skill is their most important because this is typically where a lot of your damage comes from as you level up your commander you're going to be able to add more star levels to them and as you add more stars to them it's going to unlock more of their skills each skill starts at level one when you unlock it and you can use your commander sculptures to increase the level of an available unlocked skill the maximum level any skill can be is five and once you've gotten the first four skills to five you will unlock what's called the expertise skill for a commander now the expertise skill is typically either an enhancement of an existing skill or it will provide an all new benefit to that commander using pyrus as an example you can see that as you go higher in star level you unlock more of the skills and it's also worth noting that a commander needs to have at least three stars in order to bring a second commander with him known as the secondary commander so if you guys have been wondering how come i can send out two commanders instead of just one it's because the primary has to be at least three stars now going back to pyrus as an example if i tap on skills in the bottom right corner it'll show you all the skills that i have unlocked and it will also tell you how many more sculptures i need in order to upgrade another skill now pay attention because this is very very important when you click upgrade and you add an additional skill to that commander it will randomly add a skill point to one of the available unlocked skills so you don't have that much control over which skill actually gets upgraded there's really only two ways that you can guarantee you get a specific upgrade for a commander the first way that you can guaranteed get a specific skill unlocked is by just leaving it at a single star and that way you only have the active skill unlocked and then anytime i add a skill to that commander well there's only one skill unlocked and available and so it will always go into that skill now once i get the skill to five i'll need to add another star to him in order to unlock the next skill in order to continue adding sculptures into that commander the second way that you can control which skills get upgraded 
is through the skill lock feature so if you've unlocked all four skills already you can actually come down here to this gear icon and you can lock with a sliding scale the skills that you want now as I mentioned before the active skill the first skill is the most important skill on like 95 percent of commanders in the game and so most likely you will want to skill lock that commander so only the first skill is available then if you like the second skill but you don't like the third and fourth you can skill lock it to two or three or four which would be completely unlocked in this example I really like the second skill on Iris and so I'm gonna skill lock him at two and now you'll see the padlock show up for the last two skills and what that means is the next time that I add a skill to Pyrus it can either go in skill one or two but remember skill one's already maxed so actually it can only go in the second skill now there is a flaw to both of these strategies either keeping them at level one or by using the skill lock feature and the flaw here is that it is a sliding skill so if you wanted the last skill for example there's no way to guarantee to get that which is unfortunate but at least you have a little bit of control here with the skill lock feature now the final thing I want to mention about commanders and their level is that the higher the level the commander the more troops you can bring on the battlefield so here you can see that my city hall level gives me a certain amount of troops and also my commander being at level 60 gives me another large chunk of troops here so it's very important to have max level commanders when you're doing pvp because the number of troops you bring on the battlefield is directly proportional to how much damage you're going to be doing with that commander the more the troops the higher the damage it's very simple okay now that we understand the function of commanders which ones should you be focusing on as a brand new player well one thing that i want to mention right out of the gate is that of course there are different rarities for commanders and in the early game you're going to be getting commanders primarily from the tavern okay these are the legendaries that you can get and there's also epic commanders okay and in the early game unfortunately all of these legendary commanders are quite bad they're good in the early game but in the end game they're not meta they're not good they're really not competitive and so if you invest in these commanders your legendary commander sculptures in the end game you're probably going to be really disappointed okay which is very unfortunate and i hope that the developers do change this at some point because as it stands right now new players don't really have a great long-term investment strategy when it comes to legendary commanders now if you are a player who spends a lot of money in games like this then you could consider investing in commanders such as charles martel mehmed or Thutmos or Pyrus. Those are like the only ones that I think age decently well. And really the best ones are Mehmed, Thutmose and Pyrus at the time of recording this video. But if you're a free to play player or someone who only spends a little bit of money in a game like Rise of Kingdoms, then legendary commander sculptures are going to be extremely hard for you to come by and they're going to be very, very valuable. And so every universal legendary commander sculpture that you convert into an early game legendary is a legendary commander sculpture that you won't have later down the line when you gain access to the most powerful late game meta commanders. Which which is why throughout this video you probably saw a lot of commanders here on my account that don't even exist in your account and that's because they only unlock in later seasons which is another reason why you want to play in the earliest possible server so if you're not really going to be focusing on the early game legendary commanders what should you be focusing on well first of all I mentioned this earlier but Sun Tzu is the best PvP commander from the epic tier in the entire game his AoE is powerful his skill damage is unique he has a reduced damage taken and he can protect your city you can use him in basically every game mode you can use him in expedition you can use him in Sunset Canyon which we didn't even talk about in this video you can use them for barbarians you can use them for everything okay Sun Tzu is the best epic commander in the game followed by in my opinion Joan of Arc because not only is she useful for gathering but she also is one of the most supportive with the most powerful epic commander buff in the entire game and also this is really just one of the most powerful buffs in general in the entire game it doesn't age super well into the end game so unfortunately that is the truth but in the early game you will find great value here and you can again use her in the Sunset Canyon game mode which I'm not going to talk about in this video but you can find more information about that on my channel if you are curious so when it comes to early game commander investment like I mentioned earlier I would first start with your gathering commanders okay your gathering commanders include Joan of Arc Matilda of Flanders Queen Tamar of Georgia Sarka Constance Gaius Marius and Centurion alongside your gathering commanders I would be leveling up your peacekeeping commanders so that includes Boudicca Lohar Belisarius and Markswoman and then after those priorities your first PvP commander will be Sun Tzu honestly besides Sun Tzu 
there's really only like two other pvp viable commanders kind of in the early game and that's going to be by bars and maybe bjorn okay a lot of players use bjorn with sun tzu i think that's a great infantry pairing in kvk1 and by bars is part of a great cavalry pairing but the number one commander that you should be focusing on from the legendary category is ethelfled we talked about her earlier from the expedition metal store you get three sculptures of her per day and she is a legendary commander that you can unlock for free over time she's also a peacekeeping commander and her aoe allows her to be pretty good in early game pvp so that includes your first ever kingdom versus kingdom and maybe depending on your server possibly your second as well although she does age very quickly after that so you're not going to be able to rely on her forever the best pair of commanders for pvp in kvk1 is going to be sun tzu paired with ethelfled the second pvp army you could consider using for your first ever kingdom versus kingdom will include some combination of either belisarius with by bars or Cao Cao if you got lucky from getting him from the gold keys in the tavern or minamoto if you've spent a little bit of money in the game now now, Minamoto is actually a very good early game investment if you are someone who spends a little bit you get sculptures of him from your VIP chest bundles here and for about $30 you can get his first two skills maxed out which is going to be a very good budget build for a legendary commander and in your first ever kingdom versus kingdom Minamoto as the primary commander with either Cao Cao as your secondary commander or by bars is going to be probably the best open field fighting pairing in the game second to that would be Sun Tzu with Ethelfled or the whales will use like Yi Song Ye with the Mos or something like that but I wouldn't worry about that too much when you first start the game now speaking of Yi Song Ye we have to talk about the first Wheel of Fortune commanders and the first one is actually Richard the first and this is a legendary commander that honestly is a really good early game tank but also ages really poorly just like a lot of the other early game commanders and if you have gems on hand I would recommend getting his first first skill to five when he does come around on that wheel of fortune and then just unlocking the last few skills leaving him at one for the rest of the time you play the game that's probably a good place to stop and you'll be able to use him in a lot of different events but really for pvp he does fall off pretty quickly same thing with Yi song Ye, although with Yi song Ye, if you do go for investments in Yi song Ye from the wheel of fortune really most players agree you have to max him out which is 690 sculptures which is extremely expensive for an early game investment that sort of transitions to the end game okay but not nearly as good as it used to and so for most players i would say you probably you know if you want to unlock Sung Ye, just in case that's fine but you really don't have to go for a massive investment in him it's not really worth it anymore okay now if you've made it this far into the video I'm gonna give you guys two extremely valuable early game tips as a reward hopefully at this point you've liked the video and considered subscribing but the first mega valuable tip that I can give you guys is to never open these resource items in your inventory until you actually need them why is this well the answer is simple in item form these cannot be stolen from you okay this is a pvp game and if other players attack your city while you're offline they can plunder nearly all of your resources that you see at the top of the screen the only resources that will be safe are resources that are in your storehouse which honestly even at max level barely protects anything okay 2.5 million of each resource when right now i have over a billion of everything like that is almost nothing you guys so the only other way to protect your resources is to get them in item form and you get these from completing events and defeating barbarians and for many other different ways but you want to leave them as items until the moment you need them until the moment you spend them because otherwise they could be taken if you're not careful the second huge tip i'm going to give you guys is going to help you upgrade your buildings a lot faster and research technology a lot faster and that is through the use of both runes and kingdom titles what are these if you zoom out on the map you're going to see certain things called holy sites and right now my map is going to look a little different than yours but holy sites you'll see show up as little buildings on the map and these holy sites spawn in mobs that are called guardians they look something like this and these guardian mobs only spawn spawn every 12 hours once at midnight which is at 000 UTC you'll see the game time in the top left corner and again at 12 UTC and when you defeat these Guardians not only are you going to gain a massive amount of experience especially if you use Lohar and Boudicca for example but they will also drop what are called runes and these runes are dropped randomly and they're only around for a certain amount of time and some of these runes provide insanely good benefits so first of all this one will increase the production of all 
resources by 20 percent this one increases action point recovery speed by 15 percent and this is what they look like out in the world okay and they have different rarities the purple ones are epic there's also legendary and there's also blue and greens and this one gives you 15 percent extra commander experience and this one gives you wood gathering speed and some of these will give you faster building speed and research speed and so what you want to do is send out an army to go and collect this rune for a particular building speed or research speed and then once you've collected the rune then you can start the upgrade for the building or the research and the speed that it takes or the time that it takes to upgrade a building or to complete a research is locked in the moment that you start that upgrade okay so if you have a building speed enhancement from a rune but runes only last you know a few hours well once that rune goes away the building speed is still locked in from the moment that you grabbed it okay so always 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 grab a rune if you're going to start a long building or research upgrade and on top of that every kingdom will have the ability to give out titles to players who ask for them once they've captured the center of the map so as you can see in the top right corner this is the my home kingdom okay kingdom 1568 and once your server progresses far enough to actually capture the center of the map which is known as the lost temple the royalty in that kingdom are going to have the option of giving out titles to players that ask for them so as you can see here whoever is the architect will have 10 percent building speed whoever is the scientist will have 5% research speed. And there's only one architect and one scientist in the entire kingdom. But the good news is the royalty in your kingdom can give you this title and you can start an upgrade with that faster building speed or research speed. And then they can give that title to somebody else and the building and research speed will be locked in just like I said before with the runes. So combining titles with runes will really help you upgrade things a lot faster here in rise of kingdoms next let's talk about the best ways to spend your gems now of course gems are a premium currency here in the game as you can see you can buy gems for money or you can get them from different bundles in the game most bundles in the game will come with a certain amount of gems as you can see here but a lot of gems are going to come from just playing the game and that's great but you don't get that many of them and so it's really important to spend your gems wisely so as a brand new player where should you be spending your gems well first of all there's an event that comes around called more than gems this is a temporary two-day event that comes around I think about once every four to six weeks the developers don't really give us a heads up with this and usually it comes around randomly there's no set schedule here okay but as you can see when this event comes around spending gems will get you bonus rewards so if you were to spend gems during this event on something you already were going to spend gems on then you get extra value here and as you can see you get legendary commander sculptures and you can collect these rewards twice once on the first day of the event and again on the second day of the event one of the best places to spend your gems during this event is on your vip level because as i mentioned before vip 6 is going to get you the second building queue but vip 10 is going to get you a legendary commander sculpture every single day which is very important but vip 12 you get two and vip 14 you get three vip 14 should be your eventual goal this will take a very long time it does take a lot of gems and time playing the game to get here but three sculptures per day is insane it is a complete game changer for the progress of your account and your legendary commanders in the game so this is easily one of the best places to spend your gems if you're a free to play or low spender and especially pretty much only during those more than gems events now if you come into the shop here in the game there are some other things that you can spend your gems on during that more than gems event that can be extremely valuable to you first of all there's an item called a master's blueprint and you need these to get a building from level 24 to 25 and the only way to get them is from spending 2000 gems on each building so during the more than gems event knowing that this is not negotiable you will eventually need these you can stock up and get a couple of these during that event so it's a good way to sort of think ahead but also book of covenant you get these if you remember from the barbarian forts but in order to get tier five units you will need thousands of these okay and that will take a lot of grinding those barbarian forts or 
during the more than gems event you can buy some of these books of covenant if you don't want to grind even more and i myself bought a lot of these for gems you can literally come in here and buy as many as you need ideally you'll grind as much as possible you don't want to spend your gems here if you don't have to but most players do end up spending some amount of gems on these during more than gems as they're progressing their account and the final place that we can talk about spending gems is an event that i actually mentioned earlier in the video and that is the wheel of fortune now in the early game you're going to see richard the first and Yi song Ye. they're going to show up on the wheel of fortune and like i said unlocking these commanders is fine getting richard's first skill to five is fine but these commanders don't age super well but as you're progressing through the game and through the seasons you're going to go through season two and once you hit season three season three is going to open the floodgates to all the commanders that you saw on my account in this video and a lot of the best open field pvp commanders in the game come from the wheel of fortune and this is going to be a great place to spend your gems in the late game because some of those commanders are just so powerful that they are basically must have commanders now since we're on the topic of gems let me give you guys some tips if you do want to spend a little bit of money in rise of kingdoms obviously there's tons of different bundles that you can be spending on and lots of new players make mistakes and buy bundles that just make no sense for the early game and so if you do spend money in the game you don't want to waste it on a bundle that's not really going to give you that much value for example new players should basically never be purchasing living legend or war machine right like these are not really bundles that new players should ever be buying so if you're going to spend a little bit of money in the game what's the best bang for your buck well first of all if you come into the supply depot you're going to see what's called the 30 day gem supply and this will give you 2200 gems as soon as you purchase it for ten dollars and it will give you six 650 gems every day for 30 days so you get a total of 19,500 gems for ten dollars and if you look in the gem store that's almost a hundred dollars worth of gems which is actually quite a lot so dollar for dollar the 30 day gem supply is probably one of the best bundles in the entire game and I personally always buy this every single month because the gems are just too valuable you need those gems for lots of different things in the game like the wheel of fortune the next best place that you could spend some money is on the growth fund now this is a 15 dollar bundle and as you progress your city hall level you're going to unlock more and more gems so in total you'll get 81,000 gems for 15 dollars and you'll get them as you reach these milestones what I would recommend is actually just wait until you get to city hall 25 then buy the bundle and you'll get all 81,000 gems all at once which is really really nice next let's talk about the trading post and if you come in here and you tap the scroll there is an event called the lucerne scrolls and this is very familiar if you've played other games this is basically like a battle pass okay now there's a free tier at the top and then a paid tier at the bottom and if you go to unlock the paid tier you have two options for five dollars you unlock the entire track right you can progress through the bottom track or for twenty dollars you get 10 bonus levels and 50 percent bonus to the weekly challenges now if you're active every day and you're doing all the challenges you do not need to spend the twenty dollars if you're lazy or if you miss some days then the twenty dollars might be something that you consider but even for five dollars you can unlock everything in the bottom track here and the total amount of rewards is actually insane i mean you get legendary commander sculptures you get a bunch of other goodies that we didn't even talk about a lot of this stuff in the video because it's a little bit more end game focused but for five dollars the value that you get from completing the lucerne scrolls is kind of unmatched it is really really good value and we talked about this earlier but minamoto is actually a legendary commander in the game that you can only get by spending money and by purchasing the vip bundles and minamoto in as, as an early game investment is actually a really good investment i would say that getting his first two skills maxed for 30 dollars is probably the best value in order to to max him out you have to spend I think it's two hundred dollars if I'm not mistaken it's been a very long time since I've purchased his bundles to get the first two skills maxed you need to summon him and then get 190 sculptures so the VIP 7 bundle is $20 this gets you 100 sculptures and it's going to get you more than halfway there then you can purchase the $10 bundle for another 70 and 500 books of covenant which is literally 5,000 gems worth of books of covenant which is very good value and then the last two bundles are the VIP 3 bundle and the VIP 2 bundle 
total these are both going to give you 10 sculptures to get you to that 190 number and they're going to give you more books of covenant and arrows of resistance 300 that's a lot so in total it's 32 dollars and you get a legendary commander with two maxed skills and he's going to perform extremely well in your first kvk and also pretty decent in the second one as well and then beyond that in the late game he is a peacekeeping commander you can use him for defeating barbarian forts and barbarians out in the world he still remains very valuable in the end game but just not really for pvp either way though still a very good early game investment moving on the daily special offer is a decent place to spend money every day for five dollars you can get all three of these bundles or you can buy each one individually and each of these chests has a chance of getting you a certain number of legendary commander sculptures for the commander of your choosing so in the early game you can get Cao Cao, or as you progress through the seasons you'll be able to choose which commander you want to get your hands on and some of these commanders are much better than others for example Yi song yay very good to buy here Thutmose is decent as well if you want an early game archer march same thing with pyrus and really you couldn't go wrong with a commander like Mehmed, for example as well and finally if you are going to purchase an actual bundle here in the game the king's coronation bundle is probably the best bundle in the entire game by far because it is a lifetime purchase limit of one so once you max out purchase this bundle it's gone forever that's how good of a value it is but if you go through and look it just gives you more resources and more speed ups than any other bundle for the same price and it's just it's just the best one objectively so if you're going to start with a bundle that's the one to start with okay now the last things that i want to talk about here in the video are one is it too late to start playing rise of kingdoms because the game is nearly six years old now and two should you start over now that you have all these different tips from this video when it comes to starting over i would only recommend doing that if you're under like let's say 10 million power or something like that and if you really feel like you made a lot of mistakes after watching this video maybe it would be time to start over and now that you have more knowledge the early game will be a lot more exciting for you and more enjoyable and if that's the case then you probably aren't losing that much by starting over but in reality there's nothing too bad in the early game that you could do that would warrant like needing a whole new account right like the wrong civilization that's not that big of a deal right spending 50 sculptures on Frederick that's not that big of a deal right these aren't things that completely brick your account so really you don't have to ever start over but if you want to and you're really low power then maybe you'll find more enjoyment doing that and the second thing is is it too late to start playing rise of kingdoms and as you'll see right now i am just scrolling around the map and the reason that i'm doing this is to answer that question and the answer to the question is no it is not too late because this year literally as i'm recording this the developers are in the process of releasing this new graphical style to all kingdoms in the game and this new in enhanced remastered graphics for rise of kingdoms looks absolutely gorgeous i have never seen a developer do this for a city builder game like rise of kingdoms before this graphical upgrade is going to bring so many new players into the game right now and it will bring a lot of old players back to the game i've already gotten messages from players who saw these graphics and reached out to me saying hey what do i have to do to get back into rise of kingdoms because the game just looks so much better now and it's absolutely gorgeous so no it is not too late to start playing rise of kingdoms yes the game is over five years old now and i've been playing for pretty much the entire time and even still to this day literally thousands of new players are starting the game every single day we know that because of how frequently the developers are opening new servers we see a new server open every like one to three days something like that right now we're kind of at a peak and so i think we're at a really good point to actually start playing rise of kingdoms so no it's not too late no you probably don't have to start over the number one thing that is most important is are you having fun focus on having fun in the game focus on finding a community that you like and i hope to see you guys on the battlefield guys if you made it all the way to the end of this video i really hope that you'll drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel it's on it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video and comment down below any other additional thoughts or questions that you have for me about rise of kingdoms i do try to read as many comments as possible and i try to respond to a lot of them as well so please drop your thoughts in the comment section below and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace